Guys, David Lynn, board certified dermatologist. In the past five years, there's been a massive explosion when it comes to the use as well as hair. The big question that you guys want to know is that do they work? Is it worthwhile investing your time, effort, and importantly, your money on these devices? And which devices do I use and I recommend? So basically, LEDs have a long history in dermatology for the treatment of various skin conditions. So light emitting diodes basically are like mini lasers. They offer a specific wavelength or wavelengths, and they're usually in the blue, yellow light, as well as red light spectrum. And what they do is that they can treat certain conditions better than others. So as dermatologists, we've been using in-clinic LED lights for the past two to three decades. Obviously back then when we're using powerful devices, there's a lot that's evolved in the past five to 10 years. Back then when we're using devices two to three decades ago, they were super expensive, costing upwards of 40 to $50,000 per device. But now you can buy things at home, which can be as cost effective as almost $100 all the way up to $1,000 to $2,000. So let's go through certain conditions as well as what LEDs are used for that condition. The best condition which LEDs are used for is the treatment of acne. There's a reason for that. It's because the bacteria in acne known as C. acnes produce chemicals known as porphyrins. And what porphyrins do is that they are light activated. So by activating these porphyrins, the bacteria itself is killed by the products which they produce. So in the context of acne, there are usually two wavelengths that can be effective. First, blue, and secondly, red. Studies have shown that blue is more effective than red. However, in combination, blue and red gives you better outcomes. So a blue light treatment typically takes about between seven to 12 minutes to treat and can be done three to four times per week. The same applies for red. Now here's a catch. If you have darker skin type, so if you have Asian, Middle Eastern, African extraction, you will have a receptor on your cell in your skin pigment cell that is sensitive to blue light. When you use blue light in these ethnic populations, what you could do, you can improve acne, but the flip side is that you can worsen post-acne pigmentation or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So in these patients, you may want to consider using red light treatment. So it's not as effective as blue, but it's a lot safer. So of all the conditions, acne has the highest amount of evidence. Another form of red light is for scalp, in other words, androgenetic alopecia. So for patients who are suffering male or female pattern baldness, red light treatments using light emitting diodes or low level laser therapy can work. Most patients require three to four sessions per week, and each of these sessions may take between 12 all the way up to 24 minutes. So that can slow down balding and it can slow down hair loss. It's best used for genetic cases of hair loss. Most studies will advocate the use of LED caps or helmets compared to a handheld comb purely because of compliance. So we talked about acne, we talked about hair loss. What about skin rejuvenation? Skin rejuvenation is touch and go. You have many devices there using blue light, red light, yellow light. The problem with this is that there are not many studies as dermatologists, we do use these lights to decrease inflammation in your skin and aid in healing. So patients with early scarring, and that could be scarring from acne, inflammation of the skin from conditions such as rosacea, or inflammation from your skin secondary to procedures such as lasers, chemical peels, radiofrequency, or radiofrequency microneedling, or even microneedling, can benefit from light treatments. The wavelength of light that does best is the yellow light because yellow light aids in decreasing inflammation, accelerating healing, and in some situations can produce collagen. Okay, as a standalone, so basically if you're not having any of these procedures but you're using light emitting diodes in order to stimulate collagen, 
The amount of collagen that's stimulated is very, very low compared to real treatments, for example, like lasers. So maybe if you're looking at LEDs from a photo rejuvenation point of view, where you want to buy the device because you want to treat wrinkles, the efficacy of light emitting diodes in this situation is much less compared to treating the conditions I mentioned beforehand. So in this situation, what you might want to do is probably not waste your money or invest your money in these devices, but look at other methods to stimulate your collagen. For example, your injectables, your lasers, your clinical strength chemical peels, and clinical strength skincare. So guys, that is light emitting diodes summarized. I do believe in them. Most dermatologists believe in them. We use them very cautiously in regards to skin rejuvenation, but we use a lot more for aiding in skin healing, as well as treatment of alopecia, hair loss, as well as acne. I hope you liked that quick video and I hope it summarizes how we perceive LED therapy in 2023.